Welcome back. You are going to find my next guest fascinating. And uh, his name is Raymond Mola. Uh, he's the author of Broken Hearted Joy. Raymond, thank you so much for joining us. It is a pleasure to have you today. It's a pleasure. Thank you. Your journey is extraordinary. Uh, you grew up in a Muslim family and uh, you were very interested in knowing who this God was. And uh, you called him Allah and you wanted to know uh, more about him, but your life ended up in sex, alcohol, drugs, and crime that almost led to uh, attempted murder. Yes. So that is a large spectrum. Tell me uh, more about this journey. Uh, I think when I was uh, very young, I was searching for God in my own way. Um, I knew that uh, there was something in me that just kind of told me that a God existed. But uh, trying to search it out with my is Islamic beliefs, I couldn't find him. And uh, I felt that if I couldn't find him there, and that was something that was, you know, part of my identity being brought up in an Islamic home, um, that God just couldn't be found. And I, I just turned away from searching altogether. Mm. And uh, So there did come a point where you just said, I don't feel him, and so I'm turning in another direction. Yeah, yeah. And uh, at the same time, I was battling with uh, holiness, even as a, as a Muslim, and finding that there was an inadequacy in myself. And so when I turned away from God, that's when I really began to give in to those desires, give in to those, those um, temptations that I was feeling along the way. Mm. So when you say uh, an issue with holiness, it was like you couldn't measure up to all the standards. That's right. That's and right. And so in a way, you just gave up. Yes. Right, okay. So that led you down a path to getting into what? H how did it happen? Well, I think I, I, I started off with just like petty things, um, you know, kind of testing my feet in the water, so to, spe so to speak. Yeah. Uh, and it kind of grew from there. Once I got a taste for doing certain things, um, you know, it just, it, it grew more and more the desire inside me to, to kind of stretch those limits. Mm -hmm. Was it um, the attraction to money? and uh, women perhaps partying? It was uh, a number of things. Um, it started probably in little things like theft and, and whatnot, and then it grew into bigger desires as I, as I grew. I, it did turn to money at one point, sex definitely later on in my life, and um, then it, even the acting on my anger, which is what almost uh, resulted in the murder of that uh, gentleman. Wow. So there came a time when uh, basically uh, you'd given away any chance of holiness, and you were on a, a, you know, a crash collision with with destruction. Yeah. Right. And you look back at that time. Um, how did this affect your family? My family was uh, definitely having its struggles of its own. Mm -hmm. um, I, I describe it in the book as a, the perfect melting pot for for this type of mindset that I had. Um, there was abuse at home. There was uh, a variety of struggles between my mom and my dad. And um, all of these things added to a sense of injustice just in the world, mm. uh, injustice and feeling like um, life just isn't fair. Right. And so when you were at the, the worst kind of part, you almost killed someone, uh, you were into things that you knew uh, were destructive and could lead to greater dangers in your life. Um, any thought of God at that point? There was times that I, I remember <laughs> just being kind of even angry at God amidst all of this behavior I was inflicting really on myself mm -hmm. uh, by the choices I was making. Isn't that funny that yeah. we do blame God when things are going bad, but we, we did these things <laughs> yeah. to get there. And yeah. uh, because of the, the, the pains I was suffering because of my choices, I, I remember there were times where I'd be like yelling at the sky and yelling at God. Mm. And, Out loud? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Just in my drunken stupor. <laughs> right. Yeah. Isn't that funny? So somewhere inside of you, in the midst of all the pain and the chaos, you were still talking to God. Yeah. Huh. Interesting. <laughs> so, so what happened? Uh, I got to this place of, of uh, just complete desperation. Mm. After seeing for so long that my life had been uh, spiraling completely out of control, I, in, in, in so many ways I felt like my will was just completely broken. I had let things in my life like smoking and uh, cigarettes, which became addictions that I, I found I had no longer the ability to control, mm. I couldn't get free from. And uh, from a variety of attempts of trying to be free from them and, and failing, uh, I just continued to to erase all hope of ever being, um, you know, be free. able to walk in that freedom. And so I, uh, 
I remember that this one particular high point in my life where just before I went to prison I was introduced to a Christian church and uh, the time I spent there it did seem like things seemed to make a lot more sense during mm -hmm. that season of my life than it did at any other point. How did you end up at a, at a Christian church? Well, my cousin and his wife had invited me to come out and at, at that particular time I was very open. Um, just <laughs> it, we get open, right? Yeah. When all of our lives are falling apart. Yeah. yeah. So there was, uh, there was definitely the opportunity for a lot of seeds to be planted. I didn't wow. understand it all. But um, it definitely was a time that, that greatly affected um, my beliefs. What did you feel that was different for you in your relationship with God? I think uh, it was the teaching part of it. For, uh, for most of my life, I didn't believe that God could be understood. Mm. And um, in many ways, like I, I know that's still beyond me, but there was things like uh, total depravity, understanding that the world is bo born into this fallen uh, condition. That made sense to me. That really mm. resonated with not only my own experiences with life, but what I'd seen around me continually throughout my life. And was that different from the Muslim teachings that you'd grown up with? Definitely, because... Uh, in the attempt for holiness, there's a, there's an assumption that it can be achieved in and of yourself and not ah. by a savior, not by someone outside of yourself. And so um, hearing that th there is a, a, a belief system out there that actually highlights the inadequacy of human beings was just, it was everything I was looking for. Right, that made sense because <laughs> you knew that you had tried yes. and failed. Yeah. And what are you to do with the failure? That's right. And that's what wasn't answered for you before. Yeah. And so when you realized, I am a sinner and I'm broken and uh, I, I need something more, I need God, um, was there a point that you made that decision and you really turned your heart over to Jesus? For me, it was very simple in making a decision just to return back to church. In, in this place of brokenness that I had finally come to just before my 30th birthday, uh, looking and reflecting over life and you know like where was I going what have I done with my life all those years and uh, just having that glimpse of uh, remembering that something earlier in my past when I attended the Christian church made sense I decided to take a step out and return back to church and uh, it wasn't at the church that it happened for me um, in the book it's this supernatural experience encounter with the Holy Spirit that actually happened in my townhouse basement Wow <laughs> what happened uh, the Spirit of God met me there and uh, for the first time in my life I understood why his name is the Holy Spirit one of which was that it was uh, it wasn't a physical manifestation nothing I could see it was a presence of a spirit in the room but in the presence of a Holy Spirit that inadequacy that I was uh, was learning about in the Christian belief was all the more highlighted for the first time in his presence I understood why I needed a Savior Wow. Wow, that's beautiful. And so did, did the concept and the, the, uh, the identity of Jesus Christ then begin to become real to you? Well, I realized in that moment for, for a number of things that I also talk about in the book, uh, God was speaking to me with scripture, specifically from the Bible, not from the Quran. And this really helped to solidify the belief that it's the God of the Bible who was speaking to me, the God who was making sense and all these things that I could be under, both understood from the teaching that I encountered in the church and now the experience of this Holy Spirit. Right, the Holy Spirit, which highlights all at once our brokenness and his righteousness and um, it's amazing that it's free isn't it like we just need to receive it yeah that was uh, the overwhelming part and that's why I, I titled the book brokenhearted joy because it was sort of a paradox that I had been looking for happiness mm -hmm. in the things in life that you you kind of have these assumptions happiness will be found in and to be to, to come to this uh, place where I was finally able to realize that it's in the recognition of my inadequacy, inadequ the brokenness, that I was able to find all the joy I'd been wow. searching for. I wonder if somebody's watching right now and they've got a lot of brokenness right now. They can relate to the pain that you were going through. What do you say to them? I say that you're in the perfect place to receive something of God. I think so many times it's our own hearts that, that become the hindrance mm -hmm. against God and our pride. But if you're in that place of brokenness, ask Him to come in and He will surely meet you. Mm, well, that is a great place to end. Thank you. So your book is Brokenhearted Joy. And uh, 
this is your story and it's powerful and it could mean a life change for you as well. Thank you, sir. This has been uh, just so inspiring. The Holy Spirit, it brought it alive to me as well. Wow. Thank you. I hope you enjoyed that. God bless. We'll see you next time.